Now that we have seen some of the types of stepper motors available, let's take a look at sub-variations of both the permanent magnet and hybrid motor types. These two subcategories are determined by how the leads from each phase winding is brought outside of the motor. The first example is a bipolar configuration. Here you can see that each winding lead is brought out separately. This type of winding, depending on the voltage applied and to which lead, can produce current flow in two directions. This allows each stator pole to be magnetized to either north or south. The unipolar configuration, on the other hand, only allows current flow in half of the winding at one time. Notice that each winding has a center tap that is brought outside of the motor along with each winding lead. Let's take a closer look at how the unipolar type of motor works. The center tap lead is connected to a positive voltage source in this example. Driving one of the leads on winding A to ground allows current to flow in one half of the winding, generating a polarity on the stator poles and the rotor rotates accordingly. Next, the grounding source is removed from the winding A lead and one of the winding B leads is driven to ground. Again, current flows in half the winding and the appropriate stator poles are energized. This continues to rotate the motor 360 degrees. On the other hand, bipolar motors allow current flow in both directions through each winding. Applying a voltage to lead A prime and grounding lead A generates current flow resulting in the stator polarity shown above. Removing the voltage from winding A and applying a positive voltage to lead B prime on winding B while driving lead B to ground generates current flow and stator polarities as shown above. This continues to rotate the rotor 360 degrees. Let's compare both winding configurations. Unipolar motors only allow current flow in half the winding, while bipolar offers bidirectional current flow. Since torque is related to winding current, bipolar motors will generate greater torque than unipolar motors. Furthermore, due to the fact that unipolar windings are thinner than bipolar motor windings, more wire is needed, thereby increasing the winding's resistance. This could cause increased power loss via the winding potentially raising the temperature considerably. However, using a bipolar motor will require more complex circuitry, potentially increasing the cost of your design and use up more of your board's real estate. One other point to make here. Since unipolar motors do have both ends of the windings being brought out of the motor, we could connect them in a bipolar configuration by simply omitting the center tap lead.